happy Sabbath church family. I'm reminded of the book of Lamentations chapter 3 verses 21 and 22. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, we're thankful that you have something old for a new year. As we open this year of 2021, we're asking that you bless us and keep us, cause your face to shine upon us, be gracious on us, to us, and give us peace and healing. In your name, Amen. Continuing Luke chapter 6, the next Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples walked through a grain field. They picked up a few heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate the kernels. Some priests saw them and accused them of harvesting on the Sabbath, which was against the law. Jesus replied, haven't you heard haven't you read in the Bible what David did when he was hungry? He went to the sanctuary and the priest gave him and his men the holy bread which only priests were supposed to eat. But David and his companions were really hungry. God's Son is Lord of the Sabbath. He is in charge and knows what is right and what isn't. On another Sabbath, when Jesus was teaching in the church, a man with a crippled right hand was there. The priests watched to see if Jesus would heal the man so they could accuse him of breaking the Sabbath. Jesus knew what they were thinking, but decided to heal the man anyway. He said to the man, Come and stand up front. The man got up and stood there. And Jesus said to the priest, is it right to do good on the Sabbath or not? Is it right to relieve people of pain on the Sabbath? Or let them suffer until the Sabbath is over? The priest didn't answer. So Jesus said, hold out your arm. He did so and his hand was healed. The priests were angry and walked out wondering what they could do to stop Jesus. When church was over, Jesus went to find a quiet place to be alone and pray. He prayed all night. Then he felt better. When the sun came up, he decided to ordain his disciples and set them apart for ministry. There was Peter and his brother Andrew, James and his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the Younger, Simon, Thaddeus, and Judas. After Jesus ordained them, they went down the hill and were soon surrounded by people from everywhere. Many wanted to be healed and Jesus healed them all. Some believed that if they could just touch him, they would be healed. And they were. Then Jesus looked at his disciples and said to the people, You who are poor, the riches of God's kingdom belong to you. You who are hungry will be satisfied. You who are crying will laugh with joy. Good things can come out of bad situations, even when people insult you, lie about you, or mistreat you because you belong to me. When that happens, don't be sad. Be glad. God will rejoice and reward you. In the past, God's people had to go through some of the same things. I feel sorry for those who are rich and think only of making money. They will have to be satisfied with what they have here because they will not make it to heaven. I feel sorry for those who overindulge. They will be hungry and will long for heaven. I feel sorry for those who live for pleasure. They will cry to be led into heaven. 
Don't listen to people who tell you only what you want to hear. That's what your ancestors did when they listened to false prophets. Let me tell you how to be happy. Love God. Do good things for others, even for those who hate you. Ask God to bless those who say bad things about you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone hits you, don't hit them back. If someone takes your coat, give him your shirt too. Help everyone who asks for help. If someone borrows something and doesn't return it, let him have it. Treat everyone like you would like to be treated. If you love only those who love you, what's so different about that? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good only to those who do good to you, what's special about that? Even bad people do that. And if you lend things only to those who will return the favor, what's so great about that? Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for those who persecute you. Don't worry about what you'll get out of it. God will reward you because you are his children. Be kind and helpful to all, just as he is. Be merciful to others, just as God is merciful to you. Don't judge or criticize. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give to help others. God will give you many blessings in return. The way you treat others is how they will treat you. Can blind people lead blind people? They both may fall into the ditch. Then why follow someone who doesn't know where he's going? To be my disciple, you need to follow what I have taught you. Don't keep looking at the mirror and trying to find fault in others when you have major sins of your own. How can you tell your brother about his faults or your sister about hers if you can't even see your own when you look in the mirror? You need to change your own life first. Then you can help someone else. A good tree does not bear diseased fruit. A diseased tree does not bear good fruit. You will know if a tree is good or bad by the kind of fruit that it produces. By their fruits ye shall know them. No one expects to find figs or grapes on a thorn tree. A good person will say and do good things. A person with bad thoughts will do bad things. What you are in your heart will come out in your action, in your speech. Don't call me Lord if you're not going to do what I say. Anyone who listens to me and does what I ask is like a man building a house. First, he digs until he finds solid rock. Then he builds the house. When the rains and floods come, his house will stand because he is built on solid rock. Anyone who listens... But does not do what I ask is like a man building his house on sand. When the rains come, his house will be swept away. After Jesus finished talking to the people, he went to Capernaum. There a Roman captive servant was terribly sick, and he loved his servant very much. The captain had heard about the power of Jesus. In healing so he sent some of the local Jewish leaders to ask Jesus to come heal his servant they went to Jesus and said a fine Roman officer needs your help he's been very good to us he's even helped us build a new church Jesus started following them to the captain's house but the going was slow because of the crowd then the captains sent his friends to say to Jesus, Lord, I don't feel worthy for you to come to my house. That's why I asked others to speak for me. You could just rebuke the sickness from there, and my servant will be healed. I know how authority works. 
I tell a soldier to go, and he goes. I tell my servant to do this, and he does it. I tell another to come, and he comes. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at the man's faith in him. He turned to the people and said, I haven't found this much faith among my own people. When the captain's friends got back to the house, the servant was completely well. The next day, Jesus went to the little city of Nain, and there lots of people followed him. As he neared the city, he saw a funeral procession. A widow's only son had died. Relatives and friends were with her on their way to the cemetery to bury him. When the mother passed by, the heart of Jesus was touched, and he told her, Don't cry. Then he went over to the dead boy and touched his body and said, Young man, get up! The boy opened his eyes, sat up, and began to talk. The people were speechless. Then they praised God, saying, God has sent us a great prophet. He has not forgotten us. The news of what Jesus had done spread everywhere. The disciples of John the Baptist went to see him in prison and told him about all these things. Then John sent two of them to ask Jesus if he was the Messiah. So they went to Jesus and said, John wants us to find out if you're the Messiah or not. If not, how long should we wait for him to come? Jesus told them, come along and watch and work. They did. They saw Jesus heal all kinds of diseases, including blindness and demon possession. Then Jesus said to John's two disciples, Go back and tell John what you have seen and heard. Tell him that the blind can see, the crippled walk, the sick are well, the dead can hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news of God's love is being preached. Tell him that people who believe in me will be happy. After John's two disciples left, Jesus said to the people, When John was preaching and baptizing by the Jordan, what did you go out to see? Grass blowing in the wind? Why did you go out to see him? Did you expect him to be modeling the latest fashions? Men who wear expensive suits live in cities, not in the wilderness. Then why did you go out there to see him? Wasn't it to see and hear a prophet? Of course. And you saw and heard a very special prophet. You saw the man God spoke about in Malachi when he said, I will send a special messenger to my people to prepare the way for my son to come. John was this messenger. This is what makes him so special, more important than any other prophet. Yet, you are even more privileged than John because of what you see and hear. All those who heard John preach, and have been baptized, including tax collectors, praised God for his ministry. But the priests and leaders rejected John's preaching and refused to be baptized. Then Jesus said, To what shall I compare people now? What are they like? Well, they are like two groups of children trying to play together. Some say, well, let's play wedding and act happy. But others refuse, so they say, well, then let's play funeral and act sad. Others still refuse. The first ones say, you don't know what you want. When Jesus said that, he spoke of John living in the wilderness, fasting and praying. And you said he was too strict. Then I came along, and I mingled with people, and you say I'm a glutton and friend of tax collectors and sinners. But God's wisdom is seen by the fruit that it produces. A Pharisee named Simon invited Jesus and his followers to his house for dinner. As they were eating, a woman who Jesus had forgiven came to the house with a bottle of expensive perfume. 
She went to where Jesus was and knelt down. Tears filled her eyes. They fell on his bare feet. So she wiped them off with her long hair. Then she sprinkled some of the expensive perfume on his feet and head. Everyone stopped eating and watched what was going on. Simon was very upset and thought to himself, Jesus can't be a prophet or he would know what kind of woman this is. Jesus knew what Simon was thinking and quietly said, Simon, I have something to say to you. Let me ask a question. And Simon said, yes, master, go ahead. Jesus said, two people owed a banker some money. One owed him 500 silver coins. The other owed 50 silver coins. When neither could pay, the banker forgave them both. Which one do you think appreciated the banker more? Simon answered, the one who owed the most. Jesus replied, you are right. Then he looked at the woman sitting at his feet and asked Simon, have you noticed how kind she has been to me? When I came, no one offered me a basin of water to rinse the dust off my bare feet, as people usually do for their guests. But this woman has washed my feet with her tears. When I came in, you didn't kiss me on both cheeks as is the custom, but this woman kissed my feet. No one anointed my head with olive oil, which is the custom, but this woman sprinkled expensive perfume on my feet and head. People say she's a bad woman, but she asked me to forgive all she had done, and I did. And you can see how grateful she is. But those who think they're good because they have little to be forgiven show little gratitude. Then Jesus said to the woman, don't feel embarrassed. You did the right thing and your sins are forgiven. When the people heard this, they said, where does he get the power to forgive sins? Then Jesus said to the woman, your faith in me has saved you. Your sins are forgiven. May the peace of God be with you. Amen. Amen. Amen.